let's get started this morning with Let's Just Praise the Lord. It's kind of a nice opener song for us. Let's Just Praise the Lord. We've got the verses. Some might not have heard the verses before, so hopefully you'll enjoy the verses of this song. Let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hearts toward heaven and praise. Let's just praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hearts toward heaven and praise the Lord. Oh, we thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your love. We have been in heavenly places. Felt the blessing from above. We've been sharing all the good things that a family can afford. Let's just turn our hearts toward heaven and praise the Lord. Let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just leave. Our hearts toward heaven and praise the Lord. Let's just praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hearts toward heaven and praise the Lord. Just the precious name of Jesus is worthy of our praise let's bow our knees before him and our hands to heaven raise when he comes in clouds of glory we let them ever reign let's just lift our happy voices and praise his name let's just Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hearts toward heaven and praise the Lord. Let's just praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's just lift our hearts toward heaven and praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glad to see you all out today. A beautiful sunny day finally, huh? And uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for all your cards and calls and prayers and love. And, and it's meant a lot to us. Um, Everybody has been so kind to us in the passing of my dad. But uh, we're so thankful that uh, they're together on this Mother's Day uh, in heaven. But uh, we, again, appreciate so much all your prayers and all your love. It means very much uh, to our hearts. Things, if you would. Let's pray. Father God, we are so grateful for your comforting spirit in our hearts and, and Lord, in our homes, in your church. We, we see your presence, we feel it, and we thank you for it. We pray that you would bless each one who's here today, the ones yet to come. Lord, bless all the grieving hearts. We pray that you will help all those who are suffering in their bodies yet. Lift them up, we pray. We ask you, Lord, that you'll bless this service, that it'll be an honor to mothers and an honor to you. And if there's anyone that's not saved or sure of heaven and the family reunion there we pray that you'll help them to hear the gospel clearly and receive jesus as their savior just bless us as we continue in worship in jesus name amen Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. 
Red and yellow, black and white, they're all precious in His sight. Jesus loved the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Good Mother's Day song there, huh? So, I thought we'd have a little fun with that one today. Precious memories, unseen angels, thine from somewhere to my soul. How oh, they linger ever near me, precious sacred things Just memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul. In the stillness of the midnight, precious sacred scenes unfold precious mother loving mother fly across the lonely Unfold. As I travel on life's pathway, know not what the years may hold. Scenes unfold. There's a church in the valley by the wild wood, no lovelier spot in the tale. No place is so dear to my childhood than the little brown church in the vale. Oh, come, 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 come. 
come to the church in the wild wood. Oh, come to the church in the fay. No spot is so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the fay. Let me bring it up a key. Oh, come to the church in the wild wood, the trees where the wild flowers bloom, where the fine dim will be chanted, we will weep by the side of the tomb. Oh, come, 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 come to the church in the wild wood, oh, come to the church in the vale. No spot is so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the vein. How sweet on a clear Sunday morning to listen to the clear ringing bell. His tones so sweetly are calling. Oh, come to the church in the vein. Oh, come, 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 come to the church in the wild wood. Oh, come to the church in the vale. No spot is so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the vale. From the church in the valley by the wild wood. When the day fades away into night, I would fain for the spot of my childhood wing my way to mansions of love. Oh, come, 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 come to the church in the wild wood. Oh, come to the church in the vale. No spot is so dear to my childhood as the little brown church in the vein. As the little brown church in the vein. Kind of a nice little medley, isn't it? Looking back in time. Those are sweet old songs, aren't they? I love this one. Sweet by and by. There's a land that is fairer than day And by faith we can see it afar As the Father waits over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there In the sweet In the sweet by and by We shall be on that beautiful shore There's something sweet about just a lady's voicing. Just the ladies on this verse. We shall sing on that beautiful shore. out there <laughs> in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore Let's see if the men could do any better today here we go men we shall sing of that beautiful shore, the melodious songs of the blessed, and our spiritual sorrow. Our 
in the sweet by and by we shall meet on the beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on the beautiful shore How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved that you came to prove your love for me. The voices of a All that I am and ever hope to be Does Jesus care when my heart is pain to deeply for mirth and song as the burdens press and the cares distress and my way grows weak? His heart is touched with my grief When the days grow weary The long life's weary I know Yes, my Savior Does Jesus care when my way is dark with a nameless feet on feet as the night light fades into deep night shades? Does he care enough?
When the days are weary, the long nights dreary, I know, yes, my Savior cares. Does Jesus care when I stand? Goodbye to the dearest on earth to me. As my sad heart aches, tell it nearly breaks. Is it odd for him? Does he see? to bring the message. Thank you, David. <laughs> That's one of my favorite songs. Amen. And all those songs really touched my heart. Thank you so much. If you'd like to go to junior church, the children have a special project for mom today. While the rest of us take our Bible and go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. It's Mother's Day. My mother's in heaven. And now my father's in heaven. And I just want to say happy Mother's Day, Mom. And happy Mother's Day to all you moms. Can we give Mom a hand? Bless all you mothers here today. We're so thankful to celebrate you today, and we trust to honor you and honor the Lord. We have a special gift for every mother, and uh, there's a table back there, and on your way out, uh, we want you to take one of those and enjoy your Mother's Day together with your loved ones. And we also have these three plants right down here, as you see. Uh, we have asked you to place your name in a basket back there. If you didn't get your name in a basket, we will give you another chance. There's some more pieces of paper down here. At the end of the service, don't let me forget um, to make sure everybody gets their name in, a, in the basket and we'll draw them out and uh, you'll get to take home uh, if you're one of those lucky mothers, I guess, blessed mothers to be able to pull your name out of the hat or the basket rather. The title of my sermon here is A Mother's Care. There's no care like a mother, is there? Juanita told her nephew about growing up during the Great Depression. Her poor family only had apples to eat, plus whatever wild game her husband might provide. Whenever he bagged a squirrel for dinner, Juanita's mom would say, give me that squirrel head. That's all I want to eat. It's the best piece of meat. <laughs> well, years later, Juanita realized 
that there wasn't any meat at all on that squirrel's head. Her mom didn't eat it. She only pretended it was a delicacy, so, quote, us kids would get more to eat and wouldn't worry about her. That's a mother's sacrifice, isn't it? A mother's love. Well, in telling about what a mother is like and a mother's love, the Apostle Paul said he came to this church at Thessalonica like a mother, like a loving, nursing mother. And so I thought it appropriate this morning as we're thinking about mom to see what that kind of love is like, to desire to have that kind of love ourselves as believers, as Christians, as just decent human beings as well, a mother's care. Read along with me in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 through 12. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 through 12. Paul again telling the church that he was with them like this. But we were gentle among you, just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children. So affectionately longing for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives because you had become dear to us. For you remember, brethren, our labor and toil, for laboring night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you. We preach to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behaved ourselves among you who believe. As you know, how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father does his own children, that you would walk worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you are our God as well as our Heavenly Parent. You're both a mother and a father to us. You made us, us in your image, male and female, mom and dad. And we pray today, Lord, as we think about heaven, family of God, that we're so grateful, Lord, that we're part of that family. I thank you personally, God, that my mom and my dad both are there with you now, and that my wife and I are coming to follow, and our kids as well. And Lord, we pray for all the rest, that they too will See the circle unbroken in a great reunion of family with mom, with dad. We ask, Lord, as we speak about moms, we speak about your heart. For the heart of mom is the heart of God. And we pray, Father, that you would save any that are lost and bring them into your family that someone would be born again into the family of God as they hear this message wherever it goes. We pray, Lord, that you'll comfort us and strengthen us, empower us, Lord, to be the people that can make you proud, make mom proud. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Trying to make mom proud, that's a wonderful thing, isn't it? To ask God to let her life and her love come out through you and your life and your love as you live your life, as she tried to love you. Not all moms were uh, loving moms, but God is always loving. And we can look to him 
And we can break cycles of things that were breaking us, have broken us. But today we see the heart of Paul for this church was the heart of a godly mother. The heart of a godly mother. And I'd have us to see here, first of all, a gentle mother. A gentle mother. He said there, we were gentle among you. Just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children. We were gentle. Uh, first, as an infant caring. As in infant caring. Caring for a child. Caring for a baby. An infant. You think about that. It, as verse 7 says, nursing. Nurturing. Well, when you think of some little baby nursing. I know when we had our children. Um, they were so fragile, and the, and and the, the I was so scared. Were you to to handle that baby the first time, and and it seemed so so um, vulnerable, and and that I might break it. Uh, I know the doctor asked me, "Do you want to hold it?" And I said, "No, no, no, not yet." <laughs> when, when you think of mom, you think of a lot of stories, don't you? I got lots of stories I could tell. We could be here all day telling stories about mom and all the wonderful things she did and all the scary things that, that I did <laughs> that she had to correct me with. But I also know that every time my mother spanked me, she always cried afterwards and she was always so gentle and tender. My dad, he was always gentle and ten tender. Uh, he didn't really spank me much. I guess he left it up to mom. Poor mom had to do all the spanking. <laughs> but afterwards, she was gentle, like a nursing mother. We think about infant caring, the fact that, as it says in, second, or in Titus 2.2, 2, speak o evil of no one. Be peaceable. Here it is. Be gentle. Showing all humility to all men. I know it's Mother's Day, but I'm thinking about mother and father today. And my dad was such a gentle man. He was such a, a humble man. He never spoke evil of anyone. Well, Mom never did either. And she was gentle with us when she needed to be. And she was a giant to us when she needed to be. Just think of a mother's care. Like a caring for an infant. Mothers are so protective, aren't they, of those little babies. They're so small and, you, and you're so afraid uh, that you might break them. That's how mom is. She, she's very careful and very, very gentle. Galatians 5.22 tells us that the fruit of the Spirit is love. It's joy, peace, long-suffering. Here it is, gentleness. Gentle. I know... We all need to work at being more gentle with people. It tells us in James chapter 3, verse 17, the wisdom that's from above is first pure and peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. See, the kind of mother that... Paul, uh, the kind of apostle that Paul was to the church, he was gentle, just like a mother. The Spirit uh, tells us that as we minister to one another, that we, we mustn't strive but be gentle to all men. I, I didn't write that one in there, but the Scripture teaches that. The, the servant of the Lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men. He said he was like a gentle mother, gentle as with infant caring, and then next, gentle as with infinite, infinite caring. Infinite means without measure, without, without end. That a mother's love never ends. You break the heart of your mother and she still will love you. You think of mother as someone who always loves you. God 
is even greater than that. His love indeed is infinite. You might try your parents' patience, your mama's patience. I did much when I was a kid. But my mother never stopped loving me. I don't think no matter what happens that you'll ever stop loving your children. And it's certainly true of your God that he will never forsake you. He will never leave you. Oh, the Bible says a mother and a father may forget their nursing child, but God says of himself, I will never forget you. Remember that. If you've had some, and, and there's many people out there listening to me, perhaps, that, that didn't have a, a really gentle and loving mother, and you, 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 you have had things in your life that have, that have hurt you so that, that you feel like there's no getting over that. But I'm here to tell you that, that God, as your heavenly parent, will, will never hurt you. He'll always help you. He'll always hold you. So don't look to those around. Don't even look within yourself to find help out of that place that's dark and, and lonely and, and hurt. Look up. Look to God, who's your heavenly parent, who will always be there for you, who will always give you good wisdom, good advice, good love, and good care. 1 Corinthians 13 tells us of God's love. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. This is God's love. It bears all things with you, for you. It believes all things about you and in you. It believes all things. It Hopes, God's love hopes all things, endures all things. This love of God never fails. This love of God never fails. Oh, 1 John 4, 8 tells us that God is love. And we know John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Just remember, your salvation is rooted in this great love of God. And that's the kind of love that God has for us as our heavenly parent. But, but we can, in the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love. We saw it's gentleness, but it's also love. And so you might not find within yourself the, the ability to be gentle, the, the ability to be kind and humble, uh, my dad was always kind and humble. My, my mother was always loving. <laughs> she was always loving. And she knew the love of God. I always say I got my mouth from my mother. <laughs> but I thank God for that because she's the one that prayed me into the ministry. I could come home at night after being out partying and and uh, try to sneak in and I'd sneak down the hall and my room was to the left and hers was just to the right and I'd try to get past and I'd look over there and there she'd be on her knees. I knew she was praying for me. I knew it. I'd be trying to block the door at different times with a towel doing things I shouldn't do as you probably know what that is. And they were awake, and years later she told me she knew what I was doing, and she was praying for me. I was, a, I was 17, 18 years old doing those kinds of things at home. But Dana Page, my buddy, I better cut that out. I don't want to incriminate Dana. <laughs> but I'm glad my mother never gave up on me. My mother always prayed for me. She always loved me. Uh, she was a disciplinary for sure, but she also was humble in the sense that she never gave up on me. And she, she prayed for me. A gentle mother with infinite cherishing as well as infant caring. 
Then number two, a, a giving mother. We see that in the text as well. He said, so affectionately longing for you with, we were well pleased. In other words, he was happy to do this. Happy to impart to you not only the gospel, but also our own lives. Because you had become dear to us. A giving mother. Imparting her life. That's love. First of all, loving dangerously. Giving our own lives. Giving our own lives. Acts chapter 15, verse 25 and 26. Beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that Barnabas in Philippians 2, 27, I didn't write it down, but I thought of it as I was here this morning. He, he was sick to, unto death. He was ministering to, to the church that way. And that's the kind of spirit I think God wants in us to be willing to sacrifice, willing to give up ourselves for others. Certainly our loved ones, our family, our children and grandchildren, certainly the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave himself, did he not? We should be willing to give ourselves. And that's an infinite cherishing. It's being gentle. It's being giving imparting our own lives, living, loving dangerously. There's a story, it's true, about William Gladstone uh, announcing the death of Princess Alice to the House of Commons. He told this touching story. The little daughter of the princess was seriously ill and of course this was back in those days where diphtheria was very deadly it probably still is but you don't see around much so the little daughter of princess alice was seriously ill with diphtheria the doctors told the princess not to kiss her little daughter and endanger her own life by by breathing the child's breath but once when the little child was struggling to breathe, the, the mother, forgetting about herself entirely, took the little one into her arms to keep her from choking to death. Gasping and struggling for her life, the little one said, Mama, kiss me. And without a moment of thinking of herself, the mother tenderly kissed her daughter. And then she herself contracted diphtheria, and sometime thereafter, she went to be with the Lord as well. That's love, isn't it? Being willing. It's the love like Jesus has for us. He's willing to take our death. He's willing to die for us and with us in our suffering. We see that not only is a giving mother loving dangerously, but she's loving dearly. She's loving dearly. You'd become dear to us. Look at it, verse 8. You'd become dear to us. There's something that a mother's heart has that in, is endearing as well as we are dear to her. You became dear to us. Philippians 4, 1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. The kind of love God has for you is very dear. It's very precious. Ephesians 5.2 tells us, Walk in love as Christ has also loved us and given us himself an offering and a sacrifice. Oh, a mother, a mother's care is a gentle mother, a giving mother, loving dangerously, loving dearly, and then loving, finally, deeply. Loving deeply. He said there, affectionately longing for you. Affectionately. That means uh, with all your heart, sacrificially, dearly, 
dangerously. Years ago, a young mother was making her way across the hills of South Wales, carrying her tiny baby in her arms. When she was overtaken in the blinding blizzard, and when the blizzard had subsided, her body was found beneath the snow. She had made it all the way. The searchers discovered that before her death, she'd taken off all her outer clothing and wrapped it about her baby. And when they unwrapped the child, to their great surprise and joy, they found he was alive and well. She had not reached her destination alive. She had given her life for her child, proving the depth of her mother love. Years later, David Lloyd Jones, George, David Lloyd George, grown to manhood, became Prime Minister of Great Britain, and without doubt, one of England's greatest statesmen. Another true story of a mother's love. She protected the baby with her clothing in the blizzard. Didn't make it, but the baby did and became Prime Minister. Says a lot about a mother's living sacrificially, a giving mother, and then finally, a great mother. It says here, longing and laboring, longing and laboring. Uh, first of all, let's look at um, laboring, verse 9. Laboring, you remember, brethren, our labor and toil, laboring night and day. Can you think of a mother sitting up with you when you were sick, when you couldn't sleep, when you were needing her prayers and her precious love in the middle of the night? Night and day, it's nothing for a mother to be giving herself. A great mother, great in her laboring. The word itself, didn't she labor when she brought us into the world? pain that it speaks of, the laboring night and day. Some mothers have gone and given their lives in childbirth, laboring. Colossians 4.12. Colossians 4.12. Always laboring fervently for you in prayer, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. One of the things that I see there in the, the laboring is, is the pain that we cause our, our loved ones sometimes. Thank God that mom was willing to put up with me the way she did for all those years that I was away from God. But thankfully, it really wasn't as long as you think. I, I was a teenager and I struggled a lot. I, as I was a child, though, I can remember picking berries with my mother and the whole day that we picked, the, it seemed like the whole day, that whole afternoon, all we did is she talked about the Lord and I talked about the Lord. And I can remember going home and feeling such love for her and such love for God. And then, and then I'd go ahead and still do something that was disappointing or un. un unloving or disobedient and, and I'd just feel so bad as a child. But then all the while she kept helping me and nurturing me in, into the Lord and, and taking me to church and, and like the preacher said, uh, I, he had a drug problem. His mother drug him to church every, church, every service. <laughs> and, and that's the way it was with me. She took me and drugged me, but she exampled to me what God was like and in love. She wasn't perfect, and, and, and I can't, you know, I don't want to dwell on her mistakes because I made plenty of my own. And, and a, a, as a teenager, though, I, I knew that she was praying for me, and at 19 years of age, my mother prayed me into the ministry, and I remember the night I surrendered. I, when, I, when I came home, I said, I said, Mom, is, is, I had such a, a moving experience with God's call on my life. I said, Mom, is it me or what? And in the middle of the night, she got up and she came and hugged me. And she said, no, son, it's, it's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit. 
and uh, we we embraced and she's prayed for me ever since and I'm in the ministry because my mother prayed me there taught me there of, of God's love and I thank God for her she gave me the gospel he mentions it twice here in, in verse 8 as well as in verse 9 uh, sacrificing to bring the gospel to them then in verse 13 the word of God which you heard uh, you welcomed it not as the word of men but the word of truth the word of God and I thank the Lord that every every night I remember my mother getting all all of us kids on the couch together with her in the middle and us fighting over who's going to sit next to her and then she she tell us the Bible story and read it. And I always remember at the end of the Bible story, it had, had a little thing there that said, were you listening? And, and then it would ask questions and we get to answer the questions. And I, you know, of course, you know, I always wanted to be the one to answer, but you know, old Tracy back there, she talks more than I do. <laughs> and, and it was during those, day, those devotion times that, that I got saved. And the first thing I wanted to do is to call my Uncle Bill. His daughter, Jan, my cousin, came up from Nashville, and she's here today. And it's because uh, of her mother and dad's testimony, too, and they're both in heaven now, too, that I came to faith in Jesus Christ, and I wanted to tell Uncle Bill. And so we called Uncle Bill. I'm here, I'm five years old, and I call Uncle Bill and tell him I got saved. I got saved in my mother's, on my mother's lap, just about, as you'd say. So all those many years, I had a great mother who was a laboring night and day. She was also longing devoutly and justly, in verse 10, longing for me to come to Christ. Romans chapter 1 and verse 11, For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. My mother wanted me to have the gift of the Holy Ghost and to impart to me the gift. And the gift that I have now is the gift of pastoring and teaching. And, and this July I get to celebrate 40 years of it. I didn't never tell nobody this story, but it's true. My mother was in a nursing home with Alzheimer's. And there were times that, you know, she'd be sitting at the table and I'd be crying because she'd be trying to put her spoon in her milk or something. And she didn't know what it, she was even doing a lot of the times. But this one particular time in my ministry, I, I was struggling. And I just thought, you know, I, I really just want to resign and just go do something else now. I, I just, I'm tired. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell my wife. I didn't tell my kids. I didn't tell you guys. I didn't even tell my mother. And I got there that day and I sat down there and I'm trying to be, you know, helpful and loving and, and supportive. And she was in her right mind. Well, but I'm not sure she whether she was halfway between heaven and here, she said to me, well, are you going to do it? I said, well, what? What do you mean? Are you going to resign? No, mother, I'm not going to resign. I'm going to keep on preaching as long as the Lord wants me to. I'm going to keep going. Okay, good. I said, Mom, I think you're a little between heaven and earth right now. And I think it was because of what she said there and her, her wanting me to keep going. And, you know, there's times in your life where you just want to quit. You don't want to go anymore. But it's the love of a mother. It's, and I tell you, it's the love of God. It'll keep you going. And I thank God for my mother. She was a, a gentle mother. A giving mother, a great mother. Philippians 1 8, it says, For God is my witness, how greatly I long for you. I long for you all with the affection of Jesus Christ. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more. Keep going. 
Keep loving. Keep being like mom. Keep being like God. Giving the gospel. Imparting it to your children and your grandchildren. To keep loving them and living for, for God. As he said there. With the affection of Jesus Christ. You may not find it in yourself. Most of the time you won't. You're going to have to find it in Jesus Christ. He is your strength. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. The book of Philippians tells us. And it's true. It's the gospel that changes you. The Bible teaches that Jesus is God come in the flesh. That he was born of a virgin by the Holy Ghost. And in that little infant that he was, the, the infant Jesus, he had a mother who was a blessed woman because she was devout and she loved God and, and she looked for a Savior and she gave birth to the Savior. Jesus, under his mother and daddy's care, grew up in a good home. And, and, and yes, because he's God and he, he uh, never sinned, uh, he was able to take your place and my place and never sin. And, and died for hours and rose again. And the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus according to the scriptures. And if you'll receive him, the Bible says you'll be born of God, born into his family. God will become your heavenly father. He'll be your heavenly parent. And like a mom and like a dad, he will be there for you. More than even an earthly mom and dad. He has infinite power and infinite love and infinite patience and infinite love for you, care for you. Ask God to come into your heart, forgive your sins. If you'll just repent, that means just turn from sin, turn to Christ. That means just change your mind that you want to be saved from your sins. And when you do that, he becomes your heavenly parent. Your mom, your dad, he will love you forever and he'll take you to heaven forever. You can enjoy a family of God down here and we got a good one right here, amen? Good family of God. And we encourage one another and we love each other and we try to have these attributes in our lives because they're not from mom or dad, they're from our heavenly father. Through Jesus Christ. And as you receive him, let us know that we might help you so you can grow in faith and, and find what part in the family God wants for you to do. All of us have responsibility. It takes us all to get things done for the family, doesn't it? And there's nothing greater than the family getting along and loving each other. This week, because my dad has passed, you know, there was things that were difficult things, I think, throughout life. And maybe things we assumed. I know there was a lot of assumptions uh, on my part of maybe this one is not too happy with me. Or dad not too happy with me. Or what I did here or there. But, you know, in this time, this week, we've had such great family get-togethers, haven't we? It's just been so blessed to get together with everybody and to put all aside all of our assumptions and all of our worries and all of our fears that we've hurt this one or that one or didn't do something that we should have. And, and, and I know that God, as well as my dad and my mom, they're, they're happy and they're proud that we can put aside those things. There, there's nothing they want more than for you to get along with each other and love each other in spite of it. There's been no qualms over this or that thing, you know, that sometimes families start fighting over who's going to get this. Or, none of that. It's all been such a precious thing to us. And I know mom is proud today of our handling of dad's funeral and dad's things. And I... I, there, I I could go on and on, but I just want you to know that, that they're, they're proud of you. They're proud. God can be proud of us, that we're acting like him, our heavenly parent, when we follow him and love him like we should.
when I was ministering to Ed and, and before he passed, Ed Cox. And, and, and I, I've had such a privilege. And when I say all this, I don't say it in any uh, braggadocious way. I say it thankful that God used my mother to help me be saved when I was a little one and prayed me into the ministry. So it's not me, it's, it's God. But as I ministered to Ed and I led him to the Lord in the hospital and then Sandy got saved and, and, and I know there's more that are going to be saved and maybe have been that are going to come forward who have gotten saved. And all of that I say this, as I was ministering one day after Ed was gone and she's sitting in the chair her chair. She was talking to me and then all of a sudden she, Opal, just stopped. And she turned and she looked at me and Opal said, your mother and dad must be so proud of you. <laughs> when she said that, I, I said, I hope so. I really hope so. <laughs> it was such a blessed thing to hear her say that to me. Your mother and dad must be so proud of you. And mom and dad, I'm glad to be your son. I'm glad that you and I and all of us who know the Lord have him as our heavenly parent. Amen. Amen. Just keep on loving. It's not always easy. This is a little lighter story. This has been kind of heavy today. Can't help it. I think it's just because, you know, the circumstances. But this was funny. My wife was reading her, she opened her Bible up in, in her phone app and this popped right up. It's from Mom's Devotional Bible. And it's from Proverbs 31. And if you've not ever read Proverbs 31, there's a lot of things that Mom did <laughs> in Proverbs 31. It's a pretty high um, mark to reach. And this was in there it says ah the Proverbs 31 woman she gets up early and stays up late she's smart she conducts shrewd business deals she makes designer clothes for her family and gourmet meals from scratch no doubt am I the only mother who feels like a failure next to this woman Honestly, I do my best, but then I look at her and I think, I will never be that perfect. Do you feel the same way? Friend, I have good news. We don't have to be perfect. God is the only one who is perfect, and his grace is big enough to cover our inadequacies. Did you forget to buy more milk? <laughs> Were you too tired to play another round of checkers or whatever else game they wanted? Have you overlooked that pile of laundry again? Are you ready to hand in your mothering resignation because you're sure you will never get it right? Rather than turning in your resignation, try turning to your heavenly parent, your heavenly mom or dad. The same God who looked with love on our Proverbs 31 friend looks on you. He knows your needs, your weaknesses, and your failings, and he still loves you. God's love for you is not based on whether your floors are swept clean and all your children are neatly tucked into bed by 830 God's love is based solely on his grace given to you through Jesus. You cannot make him love you more by trying harder to be perfect. And he will not love you less because you're imperfect. Our homes and families will probably never meet Proverbs 31 standards. Let us seek instead to be perfectly faithful. A woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Verse 30 says. Oh, by the way, reread verse 15. She had servants. Hello. <laughs> That's how she did it all. She had maid servants. Hello. Well, if you're going through uh, 
any difficult times, just remember it's not about being the perfect parent. It's about being a parent who belongs to God. As my sisters were going through a bunch of papers of my dad's, you know, sorting through a lot of different things, we found some really cool stuff, I'm telling you. Things that he kept. He just, I think he kept all of the cards we all gave him for Father's Day. Mother kept a lot of things too. And one of my sisters gave this to me that I had written. I'd, I'd actually made this up. This is a poem. And to tell you how long ago it's been, it's, it's typed. <laughs> well, yeah, believe it or not, that was a long time ago, typing. In a typewriter. I, I typed this in a typewriter and put it in a, a Mother's Day card to my mother. And uh, this is what it says. A rose of sweetest fragrance and all its beauty fair. Fades in all its glory when with you it is compared. And never was a sweeter smell that earthly senses seek than the sweetness of your breath when your lips press near my cheek. Oh, mother, if there ever was a flower with you to compare, it must be growing in heaven's garden under God's own special care. I love you, Mother. Happy Mother's Day, Chris. <laughs> I feel that way because my mother felt the way she felt toward me. She always loved me. Let's strive to be gentle, giving, and great-hearted. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for helping me get through this. And thank you for the people allowing me to do it. And Lord, I pray that mom was honored and you were honored. And God, that you will say hello to my parents. And that we'll soon be with them someday as you come to get us. Oh, come quickly, Lord. Or should we come by way of of death. Thank you that the promise is there. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. With your head bowed and your eye closed for just a moment as David plays a song. Are you part of the family of God? Is God your heavenly parent? Do you know that when you take your last breath that an angel will come and lead you safely to heaven? See the other family that are there who believe, who've received, who've been born of God through Jesus Christ. Listen, if you don't know for sure you're saved, you can know it. The Bible says, these things have I written to you that believe that you may know that you have everlasting life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God, 1 John 5, 13. You don't know it. You just need to ask Jesus to save you. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. To as many as received him, to them he gave the right to be called children of God. Just pray this prayer to God. Say, God, I confess to you, I am a sinner. But thank you that you came into the world through a virgin and died for me in Jesus and rose again. Come into my heart and save my soul. And when I die, take me to be with you, my dear, loving, heavenly parent. For Jesus' sake, I pray. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray somebody prayed that. And those who did, Lord, we know that you did what you said you would. You saved them. You gave them your Holy Spirit and who now seals their soul for eternity. And Lord, I pray also for us Christians that you will help us, Lord. That we'll strive to be what we should be, like a gentle mother, like a giving mother, our own lives, 
like a great mother who gives us the gospel, the truth, and shows us how to live so that we might have your blessing and your goodness upon us. Thank you again. Bless all the mothers in Jesus' name. Amen.